everyone, it's me again, the Tenderfoot Artist, and I decided I wanted to try and do a Van Gogh style painting, and I chose his yellow sky and olive trees. So this was the picture that I got off the internet, and this is my take on it. So it, it was pretty interesting. Um, I had investigated a little on, on how he, he did this and it was just all very tiny small brush strokes and it's like not even really a stroke. It's um, basically just touching your canvas. I used, for most of the painting, other than my um, undercoating, I used a quarter inch angle brush. And basically, let me get a scrap paper here. You are just going to have your paint on your brush and you're going to just touch. And then if you like need to change the movement, you would like change the, the direction of way that you're placing the brush. And the whole painting other than the underpainting is like that. So um, for a color palette, I used Cad Yellow, or I'm sorry, Yellow Ochre, Cad Yellow, Burnt Sienna, Titanium White, Sap Green, <coughs> excuse me, um, I chose Cobalt Blue, but you could use like really any blue that you want to use, that's just the one I chose to use and a tiny little bit of Mars Black. So, it was really, really fun to do. Really fun. So what I did is I, of course, I downloaded this picture and I spent a little bit of time here and there. I'd pick it up and I'd look at it and I'd say, oh, well, I see a little blue up in here. And I see a little blue over here and some up in there. And I'd look and I'd say, oh, well, these all kind of make a circle around the sun. But then when you get over this way, they kind of wave outwards, you know, going off in the other direction. So I had a circle and then they went off. So you can see on here, I have my circle around the sun and then my brush strokes angled in a different direction. So let's, uh, let's get started and, and have some fun. This was, this was really, really fun to do. It was very relaxing and it did, ta it did take me about two hours to do because, you know, you're not brushing your canvas. You're tap, 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 tap. So it did take a little while. But I was able to do it in, in one sitting, and I don't think that looking at it today that I have any changes that I would want to make to it. I think it turned out pretty darn good. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is do our underpainting, our first layer. This is going to help us not have any white poke through our canvas with our yellow ochre. I'm drawing in my mountain line and I'm going to paint the sky area and the land area, not the mountains, with the yellow ochre. I'm really trying to like scrub it into the canvas so I'm, I'm rubbing a lot in each area because I can't stand when that white pokes through. So I'm really trying to brush it and scrub it in. So now starting on the bottom, 
I decided, ew, I want to raise that foreground line a little higher. So I just drew in another line and I'm painting it in, scrubbing it into my canvas. I do not want that white to show. When I'm finished with this, I'm going to go around the edges and go ahead and paint the edges of this canvas. And, you know, I stop at my line. I'm doing the just the yellow ochre areas all the way around all four sides. This way I don't have to go back and do it and take the chance of getting it onto my picture part of the painting. Okay, so now I'm using the cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of white to lighten it up a little and painting in my mountain area. Now for the fun part, we get to do the sky. I used uh, my CAD yellow, and I have my quarter inch angle brush, and I painted in my circle. Now I've added some white to my CAD yellow, and I'm making the little, just touching in the circular pattern around my sun. moving off into the sides of it to make sure that I'm changing the direction of my stroke. That was to just help me remember it's time to change it. And I keep referring to my photo and looking, okay, here's more white, here it's more yellow, here a lot of the yellow ochre shows through. Oh, and here's a little bit of blue. This way, it, the direction of the, the brush stroke goes this way or that way. And I'm just filling in the sky. And I'm going to go back and forth between plain cad yellow, cad yellow mixed with white, and some plain white. And touch in a little bit of blue in those areas where I notice some blue showing through in the sky. Now I put a little white in the center of my sun because there's like that is being represented as the brightest part. And then I'm going to use the cad yellow and white mixture and go around and kind of fill in a circle leaving a plain yellow ochre like uh, outline. And then I just I go back over it and I just keep tapping. Now I'm not trying to hide all the yellow ochre underneath, but I'm just filling in the, the colors, the cad yellow, the cad yellow white mixture, 
and some plain white. Do this, I do this all throughout the whole sky. Adding in those little areas of blue, just a little bit, because there's not a lot showing through. Just continue working on your sky until you're happy with the way it looks. Cad yellow, cad yellow white mixture, plain white. And if you cover up too much yellow ochre, you can always add some back in. Okay, so now for the mountain ranges. I'm adding like it's peaks and valleys with some white. And I'll darken part of the area with just the straight cobalt blue. And then go back in with the little strokes the Van Gogh style strokes and place in the color using um, my burnt sienna with a lot of white. When I'm looking at the my photo reference it almost had this pinkish tint to it so I'm thinking the burnt sienna with the white is going to give the color that I'm looking for. And most of this is going to be covered up with our olive trees, but I'm going to place these marks throughout. And I'm like drawing in my trunks now with uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of black to darken it up. And I'm just kind of, they're really wonky shaped trees, so I'm trying to be wonky, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And draw in some branches further away trees the branches don't go as high as the close-up trees and I'm just putting some in so that when I do my leaves I'm gonna have some brown color coming through for the branches Starting um, adding, some, adding some strokes to my grassy area, I guess you'd call it, using cad yellow, using cad yellow mix with yellow ochre, using burnt sienna mix with yellow ochre, using white mix with the yellow ochre. I'm just varying the colors varying the direction of the strokes and definitely looking at my reference photo to kind of see 
which way those strokes are going to go because that's what's going to give you that kind of um, wavy land hilly type look just waiting for working on this waiting for my brown to dry in my trees and my branches using my darkest color to outline like the dirt mounds around the trees. Also, when you go to add your shadow from the trees in, you'll use your darker color outlining that. Okay, so I would gotten a little bit ahead of myself before. Now I'm placing that burnt umber, or um, sorry, burnt sienna and white mixture onto my mountains. In between the tree branches, even in areas that I know are going to be covered up with green for the leaves. Now the leaves, I'm using sap green with a little black to make a dark green. And I am varying my brush stroke. And I'm just placing them in, trying to accomplish the shapes of trees. Looking at the reference photo, his are kind of done in like balls of color. But I'm not trying to copy him exactly. I'm trying to do it using his style. So I'm placing in my dark green. Then I am going to go with my sap green and some white to change that tone of the green and go over top of that, the darker green areas. Not covering all my dark green, but I am definitely trying to cover most of that background blue that is coming through. Now coming back in with my next shade of green, I've added more white to my green and doing some highlight areas. Again, not trying to cover up my two previous layers of greens, just building on them and wanting to cover most of that blue that is showing through. 
and just keep working it till it looks the way you like. Back to the land part, adding in some white and all my different various colors. I'm working on those shadow areas, which is going to contain some blue and some white and some yellow ochre and some of my black brown mix and some burnt sienna and every color that we've used so far in this grassy area. Just building layers just working on it till it looks the way I like it to look or the way I think it should look adding in some darks around those shadow areas like I said before it looks as in the photo as if it's outlined with the darker color And we're, we're nearing the end and it's this is just so much fun just keep keep working it keep dabbing in the paint keep put mixing your colors in until you're happy you know it takes a little while to do because you're just you know tapping on little bits you know you're talking like a quarter of an inch in length not even width just these little dashes of paint it's cool to work wet on wet. You can let one layer dry if you want and work. I just kept working because I liked it. I was having fun. You just keep working it and working it until you like it. But don't overwork it. You should be the judge of when it looks just right for you. I'd like to take this time to say thank you while I'm finishing up with some finishing touches. I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope you give this a try. It is really fun and you can, if you would like to share your painting, you can share it with us on our Facebook group page. Right now it's a fairly small group and we are all beginners on the page. And we do really like to see everyone's artwork. So thank you again for watching.